Practice problem number three associated with sample problem F here. California sea lions can swim as fast as 40.0 kilometers per hour. Don't worry, that won't be on the test. But suppose a sea lion begins to chase a fish at this speed when the fish is 60.0 meters away. The fish, of course, of course, does not wait and swims away at a speed of 16.0 kilometers per hour. How long would it take the sea lion to catch the fish? So first thing I want to point out is we are being asked to solve for a how long. Okay, so ultimately we need to be solving for a delta t. Okay, uh, but we do have two uh, different velocities and we have uh, a displacement. Okay, so... Mm, Mm. Sorry, forgot what I was doing for a second. Uh, so let's write down what we know. So I have a velocity of the, let's go, sea lion. Let's, let's say with respect to the water, right? Because it's swimming in water, right? Uh, being 40.0 kilometers per hour. And we also have a velocity, uh, not of the sea lion with respect to the water, but the velocity of the fish with respect to the water. Not quite as fast, 16.0 kilometers per hour. And then we also have a, uh, a displacement, which is, what was it, 60 meters, okay? <clears throat> All right, so uh, we know we're doing relative motion problems, and so uh, what we want to find out here is not the velocity of, of the sea lion, not the velocity of the fish, but the velocity of sea lion with respect to the fish, right? Because the sea lion is chasing the fish. So what's the overall velocity of the sea lion relative to the fish, right? Because we know that the sea lion is traveling at a certain velocity and the fish is traveling at a certain velocity. Uh, so, so what's the, and by the way, they're both in the same direction. Right, the fish is running away from, or sorry, swimming away from the sea lion. So we can assume that they're both in the same direction, okay? Okay. So, let's set this up. Uh, so, my velocity of the sea lion with respect to the fish is going to be equal to the velocity of the sea lion uh, with respect to the water plus the velocity of the fish with regard to water. Okay? So here's the thing. This velocity is actually uh, cutting into how fast this sea lion is overtaking the fish. Right? They're both in the same direction. So the overall distance that's being covered by the sea lion is actually less than this uh, 40 kilometers per hour. So I'm going to make the 16.0 kilometers per hour be my negative vector. So the reason that's important is when I go to substitute these values into the equation to actually do some, some calculations, my 40 kilometers per hour, this is going to be adding a negative velocity. My H's aren't very good today. And that gives me a, uh, a, an overall a velocity of the sea lion with respect to the fish of 24, four, yeah, 24.0 kilometers per hour. So you can think of it like the sea lion is catching up to the fish at a rate uh, at, with a velocity of 24.0 kilometers per hour. Or you can think of it as the sea lion is uh, traveling fast. Right, 24.0 kilometers per hour faster than the fish. So the actual gain on the fish uh, is 24.0 kilometers per hour. But we're not being asked to solve for the velocity of the sea lion with regard to the fish. We're being asked to solve for time. So, uh, we know that, uh, you know, we have our, our kinematic equation, right? You guys remember this? It's just so much fun to remember. Okay, now we're not going to use this as it, I mean, I guess we could technically say that we're using it as it looks, 
but this is a, a constant velocity. Both of these creatures are traveling as fast as they can, so there's no change in velocity. And if there's no change in velocity, the numerical value for acceleration is zero. Anything multiplied by zero is itself zero. So I can get rid of that entire part of the equation. Now, for this velocity, it's not an initial velocity like it was back in chapter two with our kinematic equation. This is actually a velocity of the C line with respect to, so I can rewrite this equation and multiply by time. All right, now we're looking good, but I have to solve for delta T. So let's rearrange this, divide both sides by velocity of the sea lion with regard to uh, the fish. And I end up with an equation that solves for delta T Looks like that. Plug in. I end up with, uh, what was that, 60, 60, no, 60 meters, sorry. Which is 60 meters. It'd take them, it'd be a long chase. It was 60 kilometers. Uh, so 60 meters. And the velocity that I figured out was uh, 24 kilometers per hour. Now here, I have something that's a, a little bit annoying here because uh, on my numerator, uh, the unit is meters and uh, my uh, unit for distance on the denominator is kilometers. So I actually need to add uh, a little bit of conversion action here. Um, so I'm going to have to, for out of uh, you know, one hour for every... Uh, uh, 3,600 seconds, right? And that'll get rid of the hour. That'll actually turn it into seconds. Uh, if you don't turn it into seconds, that's okay. You're just gonna have a really small number for hours. The, the biggest issue that I have here is the fact that we have to get that kilometers into meters, right? So that'll cancel the kilometers and turn it into meters, okay? Now, if you really wanted to, you could actually turn this into meters per second, right? Like, this value, you could turn this in meters per second, or meters per hour. I don't care. Okay, the the information that's going to be communicated is going to be uh, the same either way. The scale of which, not important to me, unless I specifically ask you uh, for a for unit, which I don't. Okay, it just says how long, a unit at a time. It can be in seconds or hours. Here. But the problem is you're not going to be able to divide 60 by 24 because it's 60 meters divided by 24 kilometers. This needs to be turned into meters. So this should actually be 24,000 meters. Okay. But once we do that, and again, I'm going to choose to uh, turn this into a meters per second uh, situation. And I should be using three. So I'm looking at my, looking at my givens here. Yeah. Three sig figs. And so I'll turn this into 9.00 seconds. And again, if you kept this as, as hours, that's really fine. It's, it's going to be a really, really small number, but that's a-okay.